Follow us. Thank you. I'm uh, Jasper Urquhart, by the way. This is my wife, Sophie. Brian Lane, how do you do? What's your field, Brian? Sorry? What are you researching into, if it's not a secret? Oh, well, uh, history and philosophy of science and so forth. Oh, interesting. It's rather close to our own field. Oh, what's that then? <laughs> the corn field. Oh, Jasper, you wicked man. Or the fallow field. <laughs> Or the pasture. We're economic historians, Mr. Lane, and we specialise in the agricultural revolution. Fantastic. Eh, not a fashionable topic in today's academic world, but we struggle on. <laughs> Religion that way, bibliography this way. I must say I'm a bit surprised at the university closing its library. Wasn't cost effective, given the overheads. If the students need books, there's our excellent and highly profitable shop. But quite frankly, Jack, uh, LMU's new Multimedia Learning Resource Centre is a far better source of information access than any old library. It's the digital age. Books are history. Yes, well, thanks for your time, Jeremy. Um, we may need to talk again. Of course, Jack. Uh, as a matter of interest, what's your academic discipline? Oh, I came up through the business school. Before I became Vice-Chancellor, I was head of the Department of Financial Control. There's no end to what people study these days, is there? <laughs> Check out our prospectus, Jack. You might find something that appeals. Oh. Thank you. That's a bit posh. I've never met a rich widow. She doesn't own the business, she just works here. Yeah, well, maybe someday. Richard's sudden death was a deeply traumatic experience for me. These past three years, I've moved on. I really see no purpose in reopening the matter. The cause of death was never established. So... The cause of death was Jeremy Bentham. What exactly do you mean by that? I don't mean that he pushed him off the roof. He just destroyed Richard's life, that's all. How? Richard believed in giving his students the very best, and he expected the best from them. I know that because he was my teacher 20 years ago. Richard believed in academic standards. So what did Jeremy Ventham do wrong? Ventham thinks that the university is a degree factory and that the students are customers. So they should get what they want for their money. Meaning? Meaning high marks for average achievements and pass marks for no achievement at all. Richard objected to this, but Ventham told him to teach to their expectations. When Richard tried to defend his department's integrity, Ventham decided to close it down. When you say this was the cause of your husband's death... I don't know whether he took his own life, but I know he felt betrayed and abused. Brian. You know, Esther... I ask myself if I'm not wasting my talents in the rough and tumble of criminal investigation. I'm sure I'm better suited to the life of the mind. Quite possibly. Look, will you please come and have a look at the cracks in the plaster work upstairs? I think we could be talking about subsidence. Why don't you get that Polish bloke to have a look at it? He can't deal with subsidence. It might need underpinning. Could be an insurance job. Well, whatever you decide, my dear. I'm beginning to feel I could spend the autumn of my days in scholarly seclusion unearthing the mental and spiritual riches of the world of literature. Why not go the whole hog and become a monk? Already got the haircut. Contrary to what you told my colleague, it's been put to us that you were forcing Richard Symes out of a job because he refused to lower his standards, to get more students through the system with higher grades. Richard Symes wasn't a martyr for academic standards. He took the offer of early retirement because I gave him a choice. Either go quietly with a generous retirement package, or face criminal prosecution and dismissal. For what? The theft of books from the university library. Some valuable items went missing, 
books of the same description appeared in the antiquarian market. You know Paula Symes is in the rare book trade? Yes. We believed she was in charge of what you call the handling. How did he get the books out of the library? I have no idea. We had an electronic security system. I, if I'd known the details, I could have sacked him on the spot instead of buying the bugger off. Was any of this reported to the police? That's not what I wanted for the sake of LMU's image. But uh, confronted with my suspicions, Symes seemed happy enough at the prospect of taking the money and going. It's a sad, sordid story, but that's all there is to it. of this lot. I only hope they appreciated what they're getting. University wasn't an option when I was young. It was a privilege of the elite. It's not much of a privilege now. In fact, most of them are up to their necks in debt for it. Yes, well, I hope it inculcates a sense of adult responsibility. I doubt it. Now, 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 look, is that deep or is it bloody obvious? I think you'd have to have a degree in philosophy to work that one out, Jack. Yeah, well, a bit late in the day for degrees now. It's never too late. Come on, Sandra. How could I possibly hold my own with all these smart kids? When I was at university, you didn't have to be a genius, and it's certainly not got any harder. Well, maybe. Pavel? Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, this is Pavel Illich. He found Sam's body. Uh, this is my colleague, Detective Superintendent Pullman. Off duty. Security is a part-time job. I'm also a PhD student in economics. Working your way through college. Ah. Well done. Isn't that Jasper Urquhart? Yes, it is, yes. We were told the Urquharts had retired. Well, yes, but they came back. Part-time. Teach economic history as option to economics and the graduates. <laughs> Big demand for that, is there? No, not really. As Henry Ford say, history is a punk. Punk? Yes, a soft option for wankers. Economists with any brain wants to do what I'm doing. Learn to build mathematical models of derivative trading, join the merchant bank and make megabucks. So, why were the Urquhart's brought back? <laughs> Vice-Chancellor says economic students need more breadth of cultural understanding. If you excuse me, I have a meeting with my supervisor. Doesn't sound like a Jeremy of Anthem line to me. Ryan, join me. Well, thank you. <laughs> Are you settling in as a library member? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good. Now, Brian, tell me, as a philosopher of science, do you support Kuhn's idea of revolutionary paradigm shifts? Or are you tempted by the radical antinomianism of Feraband? I try to keep an open mind. <laughs> Mm. So it's very wise. So what brings Jasper and yourself to the library? Well, academics, where else will we go? Especially since our university library has been taken over by a multimedia learning resource centre. Mm. Full of undergraduates playing with their mobile phones. Mm. Point taken. <laughs> What exactly are you researching, Brian? Bibliographical questions in my field of interest. Yeah. So, how is the work progressing? Hmm. I can't quite see the wood for the trees at the moment. <laughs> really? Hmm. Yeah, sometimes it helps to talk things over. No, oh, I think I've got to work this one out for myself. If Symes was a thief, maybe that's what he was doing on the roof. What? 
The university library has an electronic security system. All the books have to be